Predicated on your your politics and your your point of view, you know that you're very yeah. Your following is very much about that, and your work is all about that. When you're thinking about entertaining, which is also what you do, you know, you make people laugh a lot in all your work. When you put those two things into the into the pot, is that a, is that a difficult balance? Is that something that you're continually having to fight with, or is it something that comes quite naturally? Yeah, you, you kind of have to surrender. Um, you have to kind of surrender being being liked. I think um, being embraced. It's very it's it's very unusual. I'm, I've only been in one show, and that's the show I've been doing with the Tripod guys, where people come and they kind of have a good time. You can bring your mum to it, and it's yeah. a safe bet. You know, that's a weird feeling for me. Most of the time. Um, uh, satire is like kind of thankless because. In the moment, if it works, everyone hates it because um, there's there's a really interesting phenomenon with um, people get offended if you nail them, yeah. and they don't. No one goes along to the theatre and goes, "Oh wow, I, they, he really nailed me." That's really interesting. It's really changed the way I <laughs> think about things. Yeah, they yeah. just go, "No, that's fucking. How dare you? Yeah. That's too far, or that's not clever, or yeah. that's not funny." That's what people get to because the nature of being offended is you stop seeing things in a in a kind of an objective way yeah. it, you just shut down that's what an audience does and then satire becomes palatable if it survives much further down the track that's why like people love tom Lehrer's work or they can watch um they can watch a uh you know an oscar wilde play or a moliere now yeah. and they're, they're distance enough from being those people that are being attacked, that they're not identifying with it, but they're enjoying that it's witty and satirical and it's tearing apart a society that they're actually not really a part of anymore. Yeah. And I knew that with um, The Beast, I didn't want anyone to be able to come to the play and go, oh, well, that's those people. Yeah. And it's, isn't it funny because it's those people and it's not, it's not me. And to do that, there had to be no good, good guys. Yeah. And that is difficult for a cast because they kind of want someone to be the good guy mm. and there was a lot of um, a lot of they wanted to turn um, Marge and Baird into the kind of good guys to make them kind of like working class and then mm. everyone else and was middle class mm. and you know that kind of shitty oh they're working class so they're the salt of the yeah, earth yeah, bullshit yeah, and yeah. I for me it was always like there's kind of upper middle class and then just a little bit lower but aspirational to be that yeah. much more um, higher up the social rung. So that was kind of a distinction I didn't want to make too much of a gap of, and I think they prob we probably made a bit more of that than I wanted to. And the other thing was I would say to the cast, which I think they kind of thought was me being glib, but it wasn't, but the play for me is about six assholes who think that they're good, yeah. who eventually work out that they're assholes. Yeah. And that's good. Like, that's a good... Yeah, it's for good me, that's a good well. place... Yeah. Because it's really about the bullshit that people tell themselves and that, so that they can justify everything they do in their lives. And I wanted no one in the, in the audience to be able to go, oh, well, we, we align ourselves with that couple because they made the right choices and they're ultimately good. Yeah. There has to be none of that to grab onto, yeah. which makes it a difficult thing to watch, my God, <laughs> I guess. But, you know, that's kind of where you have to be at. And... Um, it is tricky because you're satirising a very specific world and if people watching it aren't from that world, yeah. um, and I must say there were a lot of young people that came and saw the show that didn't, didn't get it, didn't get what it was about, why are these people saying these horrible things in this audience laughing at it? You know, that you get more compromised as you get older, I think, and, yeah. and, um, and you become part of this world and there's nice stuff and, you know, you've got money and you've got these values and they sometimes don't fit up so you create this kind of narrative for yourself but the allegory of the play is that if if you know we live in a world of 
finite resources and we're very wealthy as Australians, which we are living in the Western world, everything's great for us, um, is a huge imbalance, you know, with all the stuff that we've got. And the reason we've got all that stuff is because the rest of the world lives in shit. And I think that we, we know that. And that all of the, um, not just doing good, but being seen to be doing good, is about, in our minds, balancing that out. So that if I recycle, then it's okay that I consume mm. this much, you know. Mm. That if I drive a hybrid car, or if I ride my bike to work, it cancels out the fact that people are living on a dollar a day somewhere. You know, that my carbon footprint's big, I can, like, you know, I can invest in reducing that but it's still an imbalance and it's in my mind i mean there's not much you can really do about it except i think it's important to acknowledge it and to be honest about it and not to lie to ourselves the play was seeking to go yeah we we, we're kind of full of all of us are full of shit Mm. in some way your message to the planet yeah (laughs) which is a kind of a it's not particularly cheery but that's why it's a comedy you know so that's why you can kind of laugh at it and and also, people go with satire. They like they expect it to um, solve everyone's problems. So yeah. you know, you go along to see a satire, and that's your, you know, you take in your middle class medicine, and you sit through some satire, and you, you know, you, and you and you leave, and people get upset that it's not, you know, why, you know, it's not going to change anything. And I go, well, it's, that's not really the job of a play. I mean, that's your that's your job. You either respond to something in you, and it shifts something in your life. I mean, how do I know? You know, I, I never think it's like one inciting moment in the theatre. It's like a kind of a life, a lifetime of engaging with stuff and having it affect you in different ways. And at some point, you go, okay, well, this made me think about that, or I'm going to shift this, I'm going to change that. You know, and because you know my ethics are sort of fluid all the time, I can't decide. You know, a very difficult relationship with food and the ethics of meat and all sort of stuff. And I get a lot of people saying, you know, can you come and be an advocate for um, Peter or come be an advocate for, you know, this vegan cause? And I just can't get on... I just can't conscientiously stand on a soapbox and tell other people what to do with their ethics because I sort of still haven't decided what mine are. You know, they're always in flux. And I think the play sort of reflected that. It wasn't like, you must live like that. It's like, well, let's look at the choices we make and, and how we justify them to ourselves and see where the holes are and just make everyone feel bad about themselves. (laughs) 